Okay, so we saw with the rational zero theorem a way of listing all the candidates for possible rational roots. But what if you just want to get a sense of the number of real roots and a sense of how many positive real roots there are and how many negative real roots there are? Well, it turns out there's this really clever, neat theorem, which really is nothing more than just a really clever, neat trick. And it's actually due to Descartes. Now, you know, I know that a lot of people think of Descartes as sort of this philosopher kind of person. You know, he said, you know, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But actually, he was also a mathematician, and before he was thinking, his first slogan was, I factor, therefore I am. And in fact, this method that I'm about to show you, this really neat trick, is called Descartes' rule of sign. And here's the method. The method is that you write down your polynomial with the, with the terms, in terms of exponents, decreasing. So you have the highest power of x, followed immediately by the next highest power of x, followed immediately by the next highest power of x, and so on and so forth. So even if the polynomial is given to you in some sort of crazy order, you reorder it very carefully so that they're going, the, the exponents are in descending order. And then you look at sort of the sign changes. So let's do an example here, and I'll show you exactly how Descartes' rule of sign, what it says, and then how it works. So suppose I have a polynomial, and it equals this. x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 5. Now, what do you do? You look at this thing, and now notice it's in descending order of exponents. 4, 3, 2, 1, and then there's no exponent there at all. OK, now what you do is you take a look at the coefficient and just look at the sign changes. And if there's a sign change, you count it. So for example, this is a plus 1. That's a minus 6. So there's a change in sign. This is called Descartes' rule of signs. And so it's looking at the sign. Here I go from a minus 6 to a 4. That's a change in sign. Here I go from a 4 to a 1. That's not a change in sign. So I don't count that. But here I go from a 1 to a minus 5. So this is a change in sign. So I count these up. So I have a 1, 1, 1. So there are three changes in sign. So you know what that means? It means that there are either going to be three real positive roots, or there will be an even number, uh, this number minus an even number of roots. So for example, there's either going to be three real roots, or if I take two away, there's going to be one positive real root. So let me say the method again. You count how many changes of sign there are, and there will be that many positive real roots, or the number of positive real roots will be this number minus some even number. So in this case, there'll either be three positive real roots, or if I subtract two, one positive real root. But that's it. Those are the only possibilities for positive real roots. So that's pretty cool. Descartes' rule of sign. All you do, count the number of sign changes, and then the number of positive real roots will be this number or this number minus some even number. In this case, since 3 is so small, either there are 3 positive real roots or there are going to be 3 minus 2 positive real roots. There can't be 3 minus 4 positive real roots because that would be a negative number, so that's out. OK, what about for the negative real roots? Well, you do the exact same procedure, but you do it with the function f of minus x. So if you plug in f of, mi if you look at minus x for x in here, so plug in minus x wherever you see an x, then what do you see? Well, if I put in a minus x here and raise it to the fourth power, it becomes a plus x because it's an even exponent. So I have x to the fourth. However, here, when I put in minus x and cube it, I actually get negative x cubed. But there's a negative in front, so that makes a plus 6x cubed. When I put a minus x in here and squared, it becomes positive. So I have a plus 4x squared. And then when I put in this minus x for x, I see a minus x minus 5. OK, great. Now I look for the change in signs. This is now f of minus x. So remember, I placed all the x's by negative x's. I see no change in sign here, 1 to 6. No change in sign here, 6 to 4. 
I see a change in sign here from 4 to negative 1. There's a change in sign, but no change in sign from negative to negative. So the number of negative real roots will be either the number of changes of signs of f of minus x or that number minus some even number. So in this case, since there's only one, I see there will definitely be one real negative 0 because there's only one possibility. Here, how many, how many positive real zeros are there? There's either going to be 3 or 1, and we just don't know. But you can reduce the possibilities down. Suppose, for example, the number of changes in signs we had were, were 5. If we had 5 changes in signs for, let's say, this one right here, that means that the number of negative real zeros would either be 5 or 3 or 1. Because I just take the number, and it's either that many or it's that many minus an even number. So it's either minus 2 or minus 4. So if I had five changes in signs in some polynomial for this, I would see that the number of um, negative real roots would either be 5, 3, or 1. Neat. So you can actually get a sense of how many positive real roots, how many negative real roots, or at least roughly how many there are by using Descartes' rule of signs. And always remember, folks, he first factored before he was. Enjoy. <laughs>